Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining my talk and this talk will be about technical documentation. How can I write them better and why should I care? And when I say I, I of course also mean you. But first of all, hi, my name is Hila Fish. I'm a senior DevOps engineer and I work for Wix. I have 15 years of experience in the tech industry. I help organize conferences in Israel where I live, DevOps Days Tel Aviv and StatsCraft Monitoring Conference. I can say a lot of things about myself, but I only have 15 minutes to cover this massive topic. So let's get, get right to it. So I believe that anyone can and should write technical documents because, for example, in the middle of the night when I have a production incident to handle and I don't know what to do because this is something that my team member uh, implemented or something like that, then I need a runbook to help me understand what's going on and what are the use cases and what should I uh, check. So if I have a helpful runbook, trust me, I don't care if uh, the English in that runbook is fabulous or a broken one, as long as the uh, runbook is helpful and concise and clear. This is all I care about. So knowledge is what matters here. So that's why you should always write technical documentation to uh, share your knowledge that you have. So what can be considered as technical documents? In my, uh, in my experience and in my uh, uh, opinion, not only system logical design, but also uncle runbooks, as I just mentioned, uh, code readmes, onboarding documents, a project planning documentation and also Slack pin messages. If you write something that is helpful and conveys knowledge, then it could also be considered as technical documentation. And you don't have to do everything in this list. As long as you do some or a few or something, it will be very, very helpful for you and your uh, people and the people that you work with. So this is uh, where I usually ask the people uh, at the audience to raise their hands if they ever said this sentence before or had heard it before that your code is self-documented. So a lot of people say that, hey, just read the, the, the code and understand what it's about, or the code tells a story, right? It's not the case. It never is the case. You need to document uh, your code, intentions, reasoning, a lot of things, uh, document the, your systems in order to really understand uh, what's going on and history and stuff like that. So let's understand why even write technical documents. So first of all, to reduce your work volume. And then you can say, hey, reduce. If I sit down and write documentation, it wastes time it, and not really reduce my work volume. So think about it this way. I, as a DevOps, get approached by a lot of people, QA, Dev, uh, et cetera. And they ask me a lot of questions that are repetitive, like how to troubleshoot a pod in Kubernetes or a stuff related to um, internal stuff at work. So I, in my previous job, gathered all the rep repetitive questions and I created a tips and tricks uh, by DevOps document. I um, passed it along, along with a, a Zoom meeting to go over it. And then after um, I released it from seven or eight times a day that I was approached, it got reduced to one or two times a day. So this is awesome. You can do this, you can uh, detect other things that you can do in order to reduce your work volume in the long run. Uh, and, and stuff like that. And also it will help you communicate uh, things to your managers, the extent of your work. If you document it, then they understood what's going on and what did you do. Uh, convey that you're a team member, a, a team player, sorry, and really a team player and not just something that you write in your CV. Also technical documentation is good for self-service enablement, uh, like onboarding documents, then you can onboard yourself and you don't rely on your body. Uh, increase the velocity. So for example, I migrated uh, um, our code base uh, in my previous job from Bitbucket Cloud to a self-hosted GitLab, and I created a document to help uh, the, the, developer, uh, the, the developers to adopt GitLab faster because they didn't know anything about GitLab before. So anything that could help uh, the velocity to increase it, like the document with troubleshooting and even Slack bots that help with Q and A's, stuff like that could help with self-service enablement and to increase the velocity. Eliminate production incidents uh, quick, quicker, as I mentioned at the beginning, if I have run books to rely on and to help me uh, solve some issues, then it will be awesome. It will not only help uh, uh, solve the issue, but also decrease mean time to resolution and help the company meet their SLAs, which is very important. Avoid single point of failure or a bottleneck, which is you, because you tell me, do you really want to go on vacation and still be available for work calls? Or do you want to go on vacation with a clear head, right? Job security is dead. Everyone needs to acknowledge that and share the knowledge as much as possible. 
It will also help make things clear for you or the future you, because once you structure things and write them down in a clear manner, it will organize it in your mind as well. It will help with visibility of the things that you do. It will attract focus to the things that you do at work, which in turn will help you progress your career. And it will help you understand why we're doing things in a certain way. Like I can cover in a, in a document, why did I set certificates here? Or why is this model complex? Or why, do they, why, why did I choose to do things uh, as X instead of following clean code practices like uh, do not repeat yourself and kiss. So with documentation, we can defend uh, the decisions that we are taking and to communicate them to others. It will also help uh, develop your business mindset and make you a better engineer because Always asking why will result in you striving for the best solution or implementation. And why do we usually ask why when we think about things and we need to uh, structure them and exactly uh, stuff that happens when we sit down and write documentation for our systems or for our code. So let's cover here now how to write technical documents without being a technical uh, writer, right? Because we are engineers, we didn't learn the, the aspects of that. So let's see how we can do it in a simple way without being a technical writer. So first of all, we need to know uh, your audience. Uh, based on your audience, you will know what needs to be covered and to which extent. So whether we write documentation for internal use like system design or external use like an API uh, documentation, for example. So we cover th uh, different things based on the a audience that reads the documentation. So for internal use, maintainers of systems or code, for example, we need to cover things that you worked on while working on them because we remember things better when they are fresh in our minds. Things that bugged you. I, for example, opened, a, I created a document for the GitLab migration that I did, and I covered how to open a GitLab ticket support, a ticket for their support in a way that will avoid ping pong between me and them and it saves them time and I save uh, not only time, but also uh, um, valuable, um, um, how would I say that? It, it bugs you, right? It just bugs you. So if you can do and prevent people from uh, getting bugged, that's uh, awesome. And also things that aren't clear or straightforward, like I in that uh, GitLab migration that I did, I used a certain uh, DB version, which is not the default one. Why did I do that? I need to documented in order for people to not only understand why I did what I did, but also not to revert it because they thought it was a, a mistake or something like that. For a, a document for external use, like for users or consumers, you need to write about a, the thing that you are writing about, like what it is about, possible uh, use cases and quick start, any quirks, issues, and things to consider while using this X. And examples like uh, simple and complex examples that will help your user adopt whatever you're writing about. The next phase of writing a technical document is to decide or abide upon a documentation type that you have at work. So either you use documents in knowledge base like Confluence or you adopted a docs as code, which means that you interact with documents in your IDE and docs are fully integrated into the dev tool chain. So either you can move to docs as code as i recommend or uh, you have to abide and stay with documents in knowledge base um, just go with whatever is possible and these are some uh, general content guidelines uh, in either a uh, knowledge based or a uh, document in a uh, docs as code so first of all you should have table of contents uh, in your uh, document that you write about uh, in the document that you write and why is that because this is the user flow user search for something. So that's why you have to have meaningful titles and subheadings to help them find a, a, a stuff that they need in, in a very or a close accurate kind of thing. Once they find something, they scan a document to see if this is what really they search for. If so, awesome, they got the result. If not, then they will navigate to a different link. So you should also put links uh, to other documents that could be um, helpful for the user. Highlights. Use bold uh, as much as possible to highlight things that you think that are important. And as for colors, this is a bit con controversial because some people have accessibility issues, color blindness, and stuff like that. But in my experience, I did find out that it helps. People see more clearly if uh, it's uh, in red, something to be aware of, except if it's not if it's in red, except uh, and not just bold, right? So and that's that. 
uh, in terms of uh, words and sentences, uh, make sure you use short words and more sentences rather than longer words and fewer sentences because uh, that way you will help people skim over the document uh, much more uh, quickly. And please, please, please use simple English, okay? Don't try to be Shakespeare. Just write simple American English that non-English speakers can easily understand. In terms of Docs code and why you should move to, to use that, is a, it is markdown, so it's awesome and, and very uh, simple to use because you can still use table of contents and highlights and even colors. It is plain text, so it is human readable. It is easy to write in diff. And it is platform agnostic, so you can incorporate it uh, wherever you want. The documents folder is in the same code repo, so it is integrated in the dev tool chain and no need to leave the IDE. And you can do a PR review uh, to make sure that the document is in a high quality and the document even exists. And if not, the PR will fail to merge because the people didn't add a documentation. And you can do even CI/CD uh, for documents uh, to make sure uh, no, there are no broken links and linters and to do certain validations. You can do it with Docosaurus, which is a tool. You can do it with, with Swim. And I, I'm sure that there are a lot of uh, tools that you, you can use in order to achieve that. Uh, the next phase for uh, writing a technical uh, document is to remember your audience. Okay, so first of all, we thought about uh, or we understood that there is a user flow that we need to we need to uh, consider and take into consideration. Now we need to have this user flow in mind in and between sections and make sure that the document order is written in a way that is from the most used things to the rarely used. So, so uh, GitLab, for example, how to upgrade, they release a lot of versions, so probably people will upgrade, the team will upgrade more than create new integrations. So this is uh, one example, but just have the user flow in mind to help them skim over the document uh, as quickly as possible. Concept versus tasks. This is very, very important. You need to really think about what your audience wants. If they want to know something, AKA concept, then you need to write about information, background, explanations, reasoning, intentions, or the whole works. But if they want to do something, AKA tasks, uh, not concepts, I don't know if I said at the beginning concepts, I don't remember, but to know concepts to do tasks, then the uh, document should uh, basically be a how to uh, document. So uh, don't confuse the two. Okay. If someone wants to do something at the, this moment, they don't care about the information or the background to whatever led to this uh, system. So just have links uh, and help the users achieve whatever they want to achieve. Uh, in the and, and and send them back to the, their tasks as soon as possible, and just have links to what to other information that could be uh, useful for them. And the last but not least, uh, share the document that you write uh, with others. Have feedback, okay? And because and why is that? Because sometimes you write things and you uh, you know a lot of about the system that you're writing about, but other people don't, and then they will read it and maybe more questions will pop up or they'll say, hey, I don't understand quite what you meant here. Can you please elaborate or write it in a different way? So feedback is very, very important to help understand if your document is very clear and concise and helpful for uh, your readers. And don't try to read this uh, slide, okay? This is only a slide to take a picture of. And this is intended for you, uh, the people that wants to write in a higher quality uh, English. So if you do want to perfect your, perfect your English, then here are some uh, writing tips from a colleague of mine, which is a technical writer. And this is how you can make your uh, document uh, in a higher quality state, English-wise, structure-wise, uh, etc. So basically, this is it. Uh, and even if you're not a technical writer, have this golden rule in mind that you need to provide readers with information they need and send them back to their task as soon as possible. The computation that you write should be clear, simple, and to the point. And tip for managers, in order to make sure that the uh, documentation is written and is part of your day-to-day, -day, make it an integral part of a task, aka the task definition of done is when documentation was added and then and only then the people can uh, close their uh, tickets. So I hope that now you can say that your code is well documented. Thank you so much and if you want you can follow me on LinkedIn Twitter and I share more uh, on this topic and other DevOps topics. Thank you.